What is going on guys, Bang Lincoln here coming back at you with another video and today back doing another rebuild. This is my favorite team. We're back, finally. I try to do uh, as much with the Giants as I can while, you know, getting to every other team. And this is the first time I've rebuilt the Giants since the very first day uh, of my access to the game. So it's been quite some time. Now, I did revisit the Giants rebuild. If you guys don't like the... Uh, revisit the rebuild series i would you know recommend checking it out if you you know watch them like back to back if you see the first rebuild video and then check out you know the second version which is where we revisit that rebuild and kind of like continue the rebuild really is what that series has kind of turned into uh but i've got the giants hoodie on um which means that it is really it's a terrible hoodie and it's disappointing every single year that i have it on it's disappointing every time you think oh maybe this will be the year that this is a really good hoodie um and then it's like, nope, they're still terrible. And then you're like, okay, this is a terrible hoodie, but I still wear it anyway. I'm an idiot. Today we're going to be rebuilding the Giants. Uh, of course, realistic, as you can tell from the thumbnail. And you guess, you guess, uh, I guess you already know who we draft in this. I don't yet, but I think I, I do. We're jumping in at week 14, and I'm, something tells me that that coach is not going to be around much longer. So let's go ahead and hop into things here and see if we can turn this terrible franchise into a winner okay so this is the team and of course uh we are going to continue to start daniel jones i know he's injured in real life now um but we don't have to worry about injuries this is a video game we're going to turn that off and continue now um it's it's so funny anytime i do one of these people always ask he's like do you even watch football like it, whenever i say anything um and it's yeah i i watch like 90 percent of every team's games on the year uh, there are a few that i miss um i haven't seen a lot i saw one london game this year um but i missed a few of those um but other than that i've seen every primetime game i've seen mostly every game uh during the one o'clock windows which are 12 o'clock for me now which i moved to houston what the heck is that about i gotta wake up an hour earlier one o'clock was tough enough for me already that's a big first world problem but um what isn't a first world problem is using code bangle on SeatGeek to save yourself twenty dollars whenever you buy tickets for anything as that really was not a seamless plug but it did get in there uh we managed it but yeah i know this team uh better than you know anything and uh, if you can even call it a team, it's so terrible. But we'll, t we'll take a look at the offensive line first. Nate Solder, overpaid um, and not too good. I think that is pretty fair to say. This was a, a very bad signing by Dave Gettleman, as most of his decisions have been terrible. Will Hernandez is a good offensive lineman, uh, picked at the top of the second round a few years ago out of UTEP, and has been a pretty good player. Nothing crazy, but has been pretty good. John Jalapio, he was, he's like not the worst center in the league when healthy, but he's not good. We're going to have to improve on him. Kevin Zeitler was, of course, kind of in that Odell trade um, because even though it was like Olivier Vernon for Kevin Zeitler pretty much, like the whole trade as, as a whole was like picks plus Jabril Peppers and Kevin Zeitler for Olivier Vernon and Odell Beckham Jr. So... Kevin Zeitler is a decent player, but he's like, what, 30, 29? So we'll hold on to him, of course. Superstar development right guard, pretty good. But, you know, that's the best piece on the entire offense outside of Saquon by a lot. Mike Remmers is terrible. Evan Ingram continues to be an injury-prone, overrated tight end. I know Giants fans love him. He drops the ball a lot, and he, like, he doesn't really offer the dynamic presence that you think someone of his size and speed would be able to he's just not really a tight end he's he's a big wide receiver that isn't um as agile or as uh, good of a route runner as receivers are so i'm not a huge evan ingram fan i think he's okay i think 88 overall is due to his athletic traits more so than him being a very good football player Rhett ellison in there as well in the backfield saquon is an animal superstar x factor of course He's, he's not been great in the past couple weeks. Uh, some of it attributed that to injury. He says it's not injury-related, and that's disrespectful, which I could see that. Um, but Saquon's a beast. He's not going anywhere. We're going to hopefully build around Daniel Jones. He's only a 69 overall, which is nice. But um, no star development, no superstar dev. It's going to be tough to um, to work around him unless he gets star development. It might be a little bit easier. He's such a low overall, but we'll see. Sterling Shepard is... A slot receiver that's the Giants number one 
and he hasn't played every game this year. Golden Tate was suspended and now injured, and he doesn't really get any separation at all, but he's a decent player, I would say. Darius Slayton has had a great rookie year. Uh, another guy that doesn't really get a ton of separation, but catches touchdowns somehow. So Giants fans want to act like he's unbelievable. And again, I'm a Giants fan. I watch him play. He has good deep speed, and he manages to find the end zone, but he's not a true number one receiver at this point in his career at all. Um, I think he's a good rotational guy that's been the Giants' like number one receiver when Sterling Shepard's not there. So that's not all that good. And then defensively, uh, it's one of the worst defenses I've ever seen or could imagine. Antoine Bethea is old and terrible. Imagine my surprise. I said that when they signed him. It's like, oh, a 35-year-old free safety. It's it's unbelievable he doesn't have the speed or coverability anymore. That's crazy. Also, doesn't really even tackle particularly well. Jordan Love, I think, is getting the start. Um, not, I, I say just Jordan Love every time. Julian Love, <laughs> Julian Love is getting the start, I think, on uh, this next Monday night game where Eli is starting, which is, is fun. Um, Jabril Peppers has a back injury, and again, like I said he wasn't that great last time, um, or in a, in a different video. So look at his highlights. Dude, dude, highlights are only a compilation of their best plays. There is literally not a bad highlight tape out there because it's not. it wouldn't be a highlight. You got to be good on, you know, more consistently than making a splash play every now and again. But he's an okay player, one of the best Giants defensive players at the moment, despite not being amazing. Linebacking core is uh, terrible for the most part. Marcus Golden has the most tackles for loss in the Giants, and it's like six maybe, which is horrific. Um, Lorenzo Carter is a decent potential guy that isn't all that good. O'Shane Zimmon has gets uh gets to the quarterback more than anybody his pressure rate is actually pretty high but doesn't even play a whole lot which is strange <laughs> Daniel Buchanan and Alec Ogletree is a horrific combo Giants fans talked up Ryan Connolly like he was amazing when before injury which he wasn't he made a couple nice plays which is fine but it wasn't good on a down-to-down basis at all neither is David Mayo I mean ugh, it's horrible cornerbacks George Joris Jenkins is uh, past his prime by a lot. He's like, oh, I'm not satisfied with the way I'm being used. It's like, yeah, that's a fair argument, but you're also terrible. Um, so it doesn't really matter what you want and what you think your scheme fit should be. Bad player. DeAndre Baker, what a waste of a first-round pick so far. He has played worse than Eli Apple ever did. And I know I spent a lot of time on this roster and shitting over pretty much everybody. It's like, oh, so negative. Shut up. It's true. DeAndre Baker has played like an undrafted high school player. He and he's like, "Oh, go play in the NFL." And he's like, "I'll do my best." And he doesn't know he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't do anything well. Had a decent game a week or two ago. Um depending on when you're watching this, but overall he's been a huge disappointment. A giant disappointment, you could say. Go team. Grant Haley, whatever. Sam Beal's never going to play. Corey Ballantyne looked like burnt toast every time he sees the field. And then on the defensive line, it's the best part of the team. Dalvin Tomlinson's a really good player. Leonard Williams is decent. It'll be interesting to see what the Giants uh, do with him as a contract extension goes. B.J. Hill had a good season last year. Um, I haven't really seen him do much this year at all. And then Dexter Lawrence has had a pretty good rookie season. Um, but again, I still really view him as a nose tackle. I think he needs pieces around him to get a more consistent pressure on the quarterback. So that's the team. Um, I took it apart. I, Audrick Rosas has been terrible, too, at kicker, by the way, um, to go with the trend of the entire team. This team's 2-10. and 10. You can't say a lot of good things about it. I'll simulate to the playoffs. We won't make them, uh, and then we're going to simulate to the offseason, and it's time to completely uh, rebuild this team, which means destroying a lot of it, um, You know, strapping it up with C4, and blowing the thing out of the water because... We finished three and thirteen too. We're gonna finish above the Redskins, which means that uh probably won't get to draft Chase Young. Excited about that. This team's awful. I can't wait to uh completely dismantle and rebuild it from the ground up because that's what it's gonna take. Okay, so that was like what twenty minutes of talking about the roster. We're gonna bring back Leonard Williams because you know it was a big move to trade for him because uh, you're picking up a young player who's fairly talented with potential still. Um, here's the thing. He's going to be fairly expensive, but I really don't mind giving him this contract as long as he accepts. 
he's going to test out free agency. Well, you're going to get franchise tagged. It's 20 mil to do that, and you're like, that makes no sense to do that. And you're correct. It doesn't make any sense, but I want to I want to sign him to a long-term deal. We'll just have to do it next year. This creates a little buffer window for us to be able to do that. And then Aldrich Rosas has been awful in real life, but he's still decent in the game. So we are going to sign him to a big deal unless he wants to play for a new team. We might just re-sign him in free agency anyway for a lot less. So... Um, I guess let's go ahead and jump into free agency. I forgot to load in the draft class. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to do that anyway. It doesn't matter. Okay, 50 mil to spend. Part of the big reason I didn't mind um, franchise tagging Leonard Williams. Now, what do we need? The last thing we need is a defensive tackle, although that'd be nice. Kendall Fuller would be a good slot option. Um, it's the same free agents every time, obviously, but, like, I don't know. There's not like There's not a whole lot of appealing things to me here. Like, Yannick Ngakwe, I would say, is probably near the top of the list. He wants 19 and a half over three, which is really, really fair for him. Uh, I would totally, totally do that. Five-year deal. I wonder, like, what amount of money this is going to amount to. Well, 60 mil over five, but how many points, I should say. 96. I would like to get him. I really would. But um, I don't really want to go too much more money. 100 total points. Hopefully, that's enough. And then, really, we could use any help across the offensive line, but there's no point to sign someone who's 30-plus uh, at all, or even Darrell Williams is bad. Austin Blythe plays center now. Like, uh, there's, there's really not much here, so we're going to, I guess, focus on that in the draft. The defensive line is fine. We don't really need to focus on that other than edge, which is a focus. That's why we're going after Ngakwe. And then linebacker is a huge, huge focus for me. The Giants have completely neglected that position in the past. And Kendall Fuller is definitely going to get an offer for me because he is currently having no offers on him. And I think we might be able to steal him for uh, fairly cheap. And we don't even have to treat him as a, uh, as a slot corner. We can play him on the boundary and be totally fine. So we'll offer Kendall Fuller that deal and then kind of uh, try and pick up the pieces of this terrible, terrible team now. So Ngakwe rejects. That's always fun. That's like his main thing. Every time I go after Ngakwe, he's like, mm, no thanks. It's like, okay, um, the Saints want Kendall Fuller. Well, I don't want you to have him, Saints. So we're going to go ahead and increase the offer on Kendall Fuller and try to go ahead and, and steal him. And then do I have any other offers? I think it's just Aldrich Rosas, right? We're still the only one. I mean, you could you could just steal kickers in free agency, usually. I loaded in the draft class, and uh, hopefully it works out well. We got Kendall Fuller. That is a huge addition to our defense because he instantly becomes the highest overall and subsequently the best player. Kendall Fuller, star development. And then offensively, um, no development changes. Golden Tate is regressing. That's always cool. But what did you expect? The Giants said, all right, we're going to go sign a 30-year-old receiver to a four-year deal. So, not my favorite move. We should honestly just cut Nate Solder and cut Golden Tate and save ourselves the pain. Okay, so should we pick up the fifth-year option on, uh, on Evan Ingram? Yeah, probably. I mean, he's an 88 overall tight end. We might as well. It'll just give us another year to figure out what we want to do. And that's, I mean, that's probably the right decision. But I'm excited for the draft. This hopefully will uh, mark a whole new situation for us and a whole new legacy that we'll build in the coming future. We pick at number three overall. The number one thing I do not want to happen is Chase Young getting drafted to the Redskins at number two, and that's exactly what I fear is going to happen. Now, we've seen him fall heavy in the draft before in these realistic rebuilds. We picked him at like number 10 or 11. I don't think that's going to happen here, but the Bengals, per usual, go Joe Burrow. And now we have one team to dodge. The Redskins take Tua Tungovailoa at quarterback, which means that totally frees us up to draft maybe the best player in the entire draft in Chase Young out of Ohio State. Welcome to the New York Giants, Chase Young. 80 overall, number one in true talent. We took him at number three. Star or better development should be a beast for us, man. 84 power moves, 88 finesse moves, 88 speed, 89 strength, 80 block shed. Chase Young is a freak. Should help out our defense a lot. I mean, what do you expect when you draft him? You're hoping for the next Lawrence Taylor. And that's I know that's a completely ridiculous 
thing to say. It's like you, you're you expecting the next best defensive player in history, but it's not insane to say when you take a player at number one or number two overall that's a defensive end with all the tools that's so dominant and productive and athletic and, and just um, unreal, amazing in college, you want the next Lawrence Taylor, the next Michael Strahan. You, you want him to do everything and more from what Justin Tuck did as a Giant. So... Sky's the limit for Chase Young. If the Giants manage to get him, I would be ecstatic. And that's exactly what happens here as we will simulate to the second round. Let's get some more playmakers on this team. Turn this ship around. Okay, round two, pick three. Don't have a third round pick, but what do we want to take here? Now, we could go running back. Is that a huge need? No. Um, I mean, Xavier McKinney, I think, would be an interesting option. Christian Fulton at cornerback. Could go with him. I don't know. What should we do? Wide receiver is an option. T. Higgins, Jalen Rager, Justin Jefferson all here. I still think that defense should be where we put our focus into, but I don't know. I mean, there are some really good... Like, Christian Fulton would certainly be a good pick for us. Javon Kinlaw, but we don't need defensive tackle. Yutur Gross Matos would certainly not be bad. We could go tackle. Trey Smith is here out of Tennessee. That wouldn't be a bad pick. And we do need tackle pretty badly. Is that what we want to do? Could go with one of the best tight ends. I don't know. I think we're. I think defense is going to be where we should focus. Oh, I don't know. Either way, let's go ahead. Should we take Christian Fulton or a tackle? Let's go Christian Fulton. Continue to focus on defense. Seventy-one overall star. Better development. He's number 69 in the class. We took him at number 35. That's not fantastic. But um, he's already the same overall as DeAndre Baker with star or better development. So I'm pleased with the selection. And he's going to come in and start right away. So, okay, round four. Some of the best receivers are still available. Brandon Jones is available. That could be a good free safety for us. Uh, he's been a player who's been pretty good for the Texas Longhorns. Jeff Gladney, I think, is probably pretty underrated in my class. Let's we'll to see how far he ends up going. It's tempting to take a stud wide receiver. And the last time the Giants took a stud LSU receiver worked out pretty well. Here's Justin Jefferson. I know it says not assessed because um, the game can't do anything right and, and just things are broken all the time. But Justin Jefferson is certainly an intriguing option. To take him and be you know an upcoming wide receiver for us but we just have to see what else is here and if that's the best move i don't really think we should take a linebacker just went cornerback it's it's either brandon jones or like justin jefferson and, and for the sake of the storyline we're gonna go ahead and take justin jefferson stud receiver at lsu 71 overall star or better development number 65 in the class we went ahead and took him at number 99 i like what we get with him I think he could be a stud for us, so I'm, I'm liking this draft so far. We'll have to see what we can get in the fifth round. If Kyle Duggar at a Lenoir Ryan is there, I think that might be a good pick for us. Uh, kind of shore up that secondary a little bit. We'll play him at safety, of course. Devin Duvernay is there, but is uh, is Kyle Duggar there? He is not. All these safeties are off the board. Could go with a corner. Could go. Let's go Shaq Quarterman. Um, he's not that good, but it is another linebacker to add to the mix. This is a Alec Ogletree 2.0, except maybe Shaq Quarterman would actually tackle. Let's go ahead and simulate to the end of the draft. And um, we, we got some big pieces. We really did. So I'm expecting big things here in Season 2. I normally don't change numbers ever. Like, even even if I was the Dolphins and our quarterback we drafted was going to wear number 13, wouldn't change it. But Chase Young had number 92. I can't give him Michael Strahan's number. So I went with 98. Um which was, I want to say Jesse Armstead wore 98, like in the uh, early to mid to late 90s for the Giants. What a great player Jesse Armstead was. I think he was 98. But um, we've got we got a decent team shaping up here. I want to start O'Shane Zimenez over Lorenzo Carter. I want to start Christian Fulton over uh, every cornerback, except for Kendall Fuller. But there are two starting corners, so that makes sense. And... Um, Janoris Jenkins is going to play under DeAndre Baker because he is regressing. Now, the one difficulty I'm having here is figuring out what exactly to do at um at a 
at wide receiver because Golden Tate is certainly not the future. He's an 81 overall, but he's 32. He's going to be so bad next year, but also he's one of the best receiving options we have right now. So do I play Justin Jefferson over him? I think I think I'm going to put move DeAndre Slayton to four, have Justin Jefferson at three. Or well, we're going to play him at two, actually, and then have him in the slot as well. I want him to get the most touches because he's going to have star better development, which means we want to play him as much as we can. And um, I definitely want him as my slot because they always get like the most targets. So this is what we're rocking right now. My rush right end is going to be O'Shane Zimenez. And then Lorenzo Carter, I guess, can be a sub linebacker just because he's athletic. But this is pretty much how the team's going to look. Also, Dalvin Tomlinson's going to move down for Dexter Lawrence on rush D tackle. So this is how the team's going to look. It's not good at all, but we're moving in the right direction. Next up, we got to revamp the offensive line and still more the defense. It doesn't get easier from here on out. I, I mean, believe me. Okay, midseason mark. We are three and four. Eagles currently top the division at five and two. And uh, we'll renegotiate with Leonard Williams now. I think it's as good a time as any. We'll also check on the stats just because I'm curious to see how we're performing. Um, so offense is really, really bad. Um, and my voice is cracking because I'm a child, apparently. And um, defensively, it seems like we're quite good. Top 10 in yards allowed. And then top 20 in, uh, in defense points allowed. Not too good. But who knows, who knows what the second half of the season has in store. Leonard Williams is coming back, I can assure you. Dalvin Tomlinson, yes. Jabril Peppers, yes. The rest, mm, no. All right, Dalvin Tomlinson wants better salary, and it's, he's a really cheap contract anyway, so that's totally fine. All right, Dalvin Tomlinson returns. I'm going to simulate to the end of the first season and um, see what we ended up going. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't care if we kept losing because better pick. We're, I don't think we're going to do much this year anyway. Still kind of a bad team. But I think in season three, we're going to be pretty successful. That's the goal. That's the hope anyway. So we did not make the playoffs. We finished 5-11, and 11, but I'll take that because that's going to be a decent pick. So I didn't really want to be entirely successful as we had one of the worst offenses in the league uh, in terms of yards defense was about middle of the pack slightly worse than average and then point scored yeah we were we were really 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 bad in general our whole team was terrible <laughs> it is what it is daniel jones numbers aren't really that bad especially for a second year quarterback who's a really low overall saquon was pretty good just didn't find the ends on all that much justin jefferson outside of not really scoring had a pretty good rookie season. Evan Ingram, um, great season for him. Defensively, Alec Ogletree had a very, very good year. Tackles for loss, 13 for Chase Young, but he only registered four sacks. Five led the way with Dalvin Tomlinson. Three for Alec Ogletree, three for Julian Love, two for Kendall Fuller in terms of picks. Chase Young even had a pick, which is interesting. You don't really expect to see him in there. As Mariota wins MVP, another name you don't expect to see in there at all as the... NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Mitchell Trubisky. What is happening with this? <laughs> Defensive Player of the Year is Quan Alexander. No Giants. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Tua Tungo by Loa. Justin Jefferson at 7. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Chase Young. Okay. Christian Fulton at number 2. Almost would have preferred Christian Fulton to win it because Chase Young has Superstar X Factor, which means that um he's already amazing and there's no point for him to to win any award other than he gets more xp well i mean I guess, I guess there is a point to that but um i don't know it doesn't say too much the titans were in the super bowl against the bears if that happens next year i will be in legitimate shock as justin jefferson does have star development golden tate's already down to a 78 so i'm super glad we played justin jefferson as much as we did and then defensively Chase Young, Superstar X-Factor. Christian Fulton, Christian Fulton has Superstar. Now, did he get that, or did he draft get drafted with that? He got increased to it. Okay. See, that's already an incredible pick paying off for us. And then Julian Love got a star development. So we just really need to focus on linebacker. And honestly, I mean, this would be a strange transition to a 4-3 just because we have three interior defensive linemen here. But we're not really getting pressure off the edge. It almost feels like a waste of Chase Young's talents. 
So maybe it was just like it's kind of a bad team overall. We'll get maybe a better rush um, and that isn't O'Shea and Zimenez and better linebackers. Maybe the team will play a little bit better because this is a 3-4 personnel setup, obviously. We just kind of have to figure out how to work around it. Daniel Jones, I'd love for him to uh, get development. We have Shea Patterson who's coming for his job apparently, which is uh, no bueno. Janoris Jenkins down to a 70. Good Lord, I am out on that. Okay, free agency. Just under 45 mil to spend, and we should be able to bring in some really impactful players. TJ Watt might just be one of them. Laramie Tunsil would be a huge addition as well. As a, I mean, I'd be more comfortable paying him a big contract than you know, retaining Nate Solder for any extended amount of time. So Laramie Tunsil, I think, is probably our top priority, but TJ Watt is definitely someone I'd like to bring in as well. I'd like to check out the draft class, but I can't right now, so I don't really know if taking an edge rusher high is an option. So I think we probably just should commit to uh, to trying to get TJ Watt in free agency. What is, what is happening that is not extending? What is happening with the bonus? It's not changing the cap. It, I, that was so weird. That was a, uh, a weird glitch there, for sure. Okay, moment of truth here as TJ Watt rejects, but we did get Laramie Tunsil and we did get Zach Cunningham. Now, I'm not even too mad about TJ Watt declining because he was a really expensive contract anyway. We improved at a huge position because left tackle is no longer an issue. Nate Solder is pretty much uh, free to get cut now, um, and that's going to free 14 mil. Now, the penalty is uh, a little bit much still. I think he's going to be going into near the final year of his contract anyway, so we might just want to keep him. Yeah, there's no reason to take the cap hit. He'll just, you know, ride the bench or whatever as he continues to regress. But um, I think we're in, we're going into a pretty good spot. Our offensive line is now really, really coming together. And then defensively, Zach Cunningham is a huge addition. We're just looking for edge, another inside linebacker, and then maybe a safety. Cornerback I don't think is an issue anymore. So it's safety and then off the ball and edge rushing linebacker. That's all we need. Which, I mean, really isn't that is that much defensively. And then, I mean, offensively is another issue because wide receiver is still kind of an issue. We haven't really even talked about quarterback, but we're still going to rock with Daniel Jones. And then, obviously, offensive line, center, guard. Those are going to be positions in need for us. But we pick at number four overall. Should be able to get an impactful player or move down, get some draft capital. Isaiah Walton, interesting. 6'4", 298, but he's a power rusher type, not a run stopper. Leads me to believe that he is extremely well-rounded and really, really good. So if he's available, I would consider it. Nate Williams out of Colorado State also looks like a monster. Only 6'1", which is a little bit undersized for an edge rusher. But um, interesting. Brennan Holmes has his stats backwards, so that could mean Heisman, I think people were telling me. So that could be a good development trade. I don't know. We have a, we have a lot of options to consider. Might end up trading down. Who knows? This is a hell of a first round cornerback. C plus awareness, man, and C minus zone. Yeah, can't wait to draft him in the first round. That leads me to believe that this draft class is terrible. Who are you, Curtis Dodge, in the sixth round with first round talent? Yes, please. An elusive back with A minus trucking as his top skill. And this is a very interesting draft class for a lot of reasons. We don't need a running back, but I mean, it is interesting to think about. So here's the plan. I think if Nate Williams is available at number four, I'll probably take him. Well, it'll be a tough decision. Otherwise, we're going to trade down because I don't think you're going to get a top four pick very often. There goes Walton, 76 overall. I thought he'd be higher, honestly. Nate Williams is a 79. He goes at number two, unfortunately in which case it is time to trade down. So Seattle is offering us number 22 overall, a second round pick next year and a fourth round pick this year for number four. That doesn't seem like enough. I'm going to see if I can offer like a manual trade and see if we can't get a little bit more value for that. Okay, trading number four overall as well as a third and a sixth to get number 12 and number 20. And I would much rather have those picks because... Um, I think we can help out the team more than just one player at number four overall. So uh, I'm ecstatic with that trade. I think we're in a really, really good spot. Now let's take two players that can help us uh, instead of one. Okay, so this first player I'm going to be taking is Terrell Hull at NC State. Now it says cornerback, but I think this guy could be a safety. 5'11", 214. Also, he's a baller. Skip the combine. 
didn't care about it at all. And now we're going to be drafting him. Terrell Hull, 76 overall. Star or better development. Number seven in the class. We took him at number 12. I think this is a guy that could play free safety for us. He's got 73 man, 73 zone, 74 uh, four play rec. Decent enough tackling, good speed. High press, decent catching, decent enough hit power. I think he's a free safety. Or there goes George Ramsey. Now, Ramsey was a player I was going to take next. He's only a 71 overall. I think this draft class is a little lackluster, as I mentioned. Um, now, Grant Ashley looks like a stud. We just don't need defensive tackle at all. So I really... I'm having a tough time rationalizing taking that. So I think what I would opt to do instead is... And I know everyone... You know what's coming if you've been here ever. I'm going to be trading down. I don't need it. I don't need the pick. If I can get a first rounder next year, I'll be pleased. Uh, and I know that I can, so I'm not going to worry about the stupid trade offers. I'm just going to make it happen myself. Trading number 20, a seventh this year, and a third next year for a first next year from the Jets. I'd, again, much rather have their first round pick next year, you know, especially considering, especially considering that they're probably going to be really bad. Uh, hopefully they're not all of a sudden like real good, but that'd be a little bit awkward. Top of the second round, we got a pick here. Um, Adam Boyd is available. Which is a name that sounds so familiar. Adam Boyd. Adam Boyd. Why does that sound so familiar? I don't know. It might be like a player name we've drafted before. Now, I'm in between a couple of guys right now. It's probably going to be one of these four tackles. And then we'll take Curtis Dodge in the fourth if he's available. Question is, which one do we want? We're going to go with Brandon Barbieri out of Buffalo. I think he's the best player 70 overall, number 24 in the class. We took him at 36. He's not bad. I mean, he's well-rounded, doesn't do anything particularly well, but is strong. Decent enough speed. I, I don't mind that pick at all. I mean, obviously, it's good for the spot, but I think that's a, a player that's going to help us out a lot. And Curtis Dodge still is available in the fourth round, so we're going to go ahead and take him out of Western Michigan. He is a 70 overall with star or better development, number 21 in the class, and we took him at 100. Really, really great pick for us. Decent speed for him, too. 84 speed, good hit power. We definitely, and decent enough zone coverage, too. We definitely have a really good building block here in Curtis Dodge. I think that's our, uh, I think that could easily be our stud middle linebacker of the future. That's a great pick. Let me see Nate Williams here. He's got star better development. I want to see what we're missing out on. Now, we did get two good players, or like three good players, really. He only has star development. Okay. Hey, that's not too bad. I mean, we miss, we miss out on a really good player, obviously. He's the best player in the class. Um, and then Grant Ashley was pretty good, too, we talked about. But we did get a 76 overall, so tied for number three for highest overall. And then we got two uh, 70 overalls that I think are going to help us out, including, you know, a stud middle linebacker and a tackle that can come in immediately and play meaningful snaps for us. So that, that's a that's a huge win-win. I'm not rationalizing anything. I'm just, I'm really thrilled with the draft class that we had. I really am. Because this is a team now that can definitely compete. Receiving core is definitely moving in the right direction. Other than still having Golden Tate, but Justin Jefferson can be a playmaker for us. I don't know about Sterling Shepard long-term. And then defensively, like we have some studs now. Dodge is going to play over Ogletree. We didn't really improve at edge rusher at all, but we did get Hull, who's going to start at free safety for us. I mean, I think this was a, a really solid draft class. We don't know his development. I'm not going to check. I think that ruins the fun because he's going to start anyway. It doesn't really matter, uh, but we will find out probably near the midseason mark what he ends up being. And then Julian Love can... I mean, we could keep him at free safety or he could go play cornerback, which is what he played at Notre Dame. I mean, it's, it's, we, we don't really have to make a decision on that, but you have DeAndre Baker, Sam Beal. I don't know. I guess we'll just keep that backup free safety. Uh, we need a kicker and punter. And then our specialist will have Fuller in the slot, DeAndre Baker afterwards. Holzing Mir starting free safety. We'll have Zimenez and Chase Young going after the QB. We'll have Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams as our two rush D tackles. Uh, I want our rookie linebacker to be our sub linebacker. I have Justin Jefferson still in the slot, and then Saquon, of course, will be our main running back attraction, obviously. Okay, so you've seen the team. We're going to simulate to the mid-season mark and hopefully actually realize some success now. I think I'm like really thrilled with where the team is going, but needless to say, it's not quite there yet. 
Just got to develop these guys and continue to bring in talent, and we're going to be golden. Tate. <laughs> oh, very good one. That's that's a hell of a joke. Okay. Um, we are 6-2. and two. That's what I'm talking about. That is a hell of a productive team. And now it's time to see some of these development traits. Um, Barbieri is improving. Daniel Jones is... Um, Daniel Jones still, that's his name. Defensively, ooh. So, Hull only has star development, but Dodge has superstar dev, and he was supposed to go in the sixth round. And obviously, we drafted him with that. That is a hell of a pick. That is so good. That is awesome. Now, I wish Hull had superstar, superstar X-Factor, obviously, but really not bad at all. I mean, very good draft class for us. Very strong. Okay, so Saquon Barkley has an expiring contract. So we need to bring him back. Evan Ingram, Kevin Zeitler, Will Hernandez, a lot of impactful players. Now Ogletree, gone. Sam Beal, I don't, I've don't. i never seen him play. Has Sam Beal ever played an NFL snap in the regular season? I really don't think so. I don't think he ever has. I, I don't know that I've ever seen him. Okay, so okay, then, now, okay, he played against the Jets and the Packers. He made one tackle in each game for two career tackles. <laughs> Those are his only stats. So, I don't know. I guess I didn't see him play. But uh, he was there. He was out there. He's, he's played in two games ever. Giants spent a third-round pick on him in the 2018 supplemental draft. Uh, he's a stud. Don't don't get me wrong. He's a stud. Nate Solder, gone. Pulley, gone. David Sills, former USC QB recruit. Lane Kiffin offered him a, a, a <laughs> Lane Kiffin offered him a full ride scholarship when he was in middle school, and then um, he did not work out of being a quarterback. Went to JUCO and then ended up being a wide receiver at West Virginia, where he was pretty good. He had like some hand injury. I don't know. Uh, Ogletree gone. B.J. Hill probably gone. I but I do want to bring back these four guys though. I'm just getting too excited about not bringing back not good players. Okay, Will Hernandez, we got him. Kevin Zeitler, Evan Ingram, Saquon Barkley, all back. We'll make decisions about Lorenzo Carter and BJ Hill a little bit later down the line. It's not necessary, necessarily necessary. I've never said that before. I didn't care for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay away from saying necessarily necessary um, for the rest of my life. I didn't. <laughs> why does it sound so unnatural and strange? I don't I don't know. Ooh, first round bye. Even after a 27 to three loss. In week 17, we went 11 and 5. This team is here to play. Let's go. Daniel Jones, only 26 passing touchdowns, but our defense was crazy good. There it is. Hey, I'll take that. Oh, I mean, we scored some points, though. So Saquon Barkley had a lot of touchdowns, maybe. Probably. 16. Yeah, it's a pretty good season. Jeff Wilson Jr. had 7. Okay. Receiving. Sterling Shepard, pretty good year. Justin Jefferson, pretty good year. Evan Ingram, great year for a tight end. Uh, blocking. Nate Solder, zero sacks allowed. Oh, I wonder why. It didn't play. That's the only way that would ever happen. Zach Cunningham with a pretty good year. Uh, Leonard Williams with 22 tackles for loss. Chase Young had 11 and a half sacks, which led the team. Nobody else had more than three and a half. <laughs> We're getting like no pressure. Jarrell Peppers with three picks. Christian Fulton with two. Um, any defensive touchdowns? Probably not. No, we didn't have any. But I expect to see some award consideration here, if only a rookie, as Lamar Jackson wins MVP. A no Giants, NFC Offense Player of the Year, Ezekiel Elliott. Saquon at number 8, Defensive Player of the Year, Khalil Mack. Chase Young at 10, Offensive Rookie of the Year is Sherrod Widener as a quarterback. Um, he was like the number one overall prospect. And Defensive Rookie of the Year is Curtis Dodge. Let's go. Terrell Hull at 3, I would have preferred him to win it, honestly. Because uh, Dodge already has... Um, Superstar Dev, but really, really good player. Maybe he'll get Superstar X Factor now. I mean, that'd be crazy. Christian Fulton got an ability now that he is up to an 80 overall, I would presume. We'll check out the team here. I need I need Daniel Jones to get a development trait, please. And then Chase Young is almost up to a 90. I wonder how much of this is uh, to do with morale. He's a 90 now, clearly. But um, plus one speed again and the ability slot. He gets... um. Secure tackler and edge threat. Defenders with this ability use dominant pass rush moves while rushing from the edge of the defense. His fear monger is uh, very interesting. Yeah, he's unbelievably good. Christian Fulton. What does Dodge have? Probably nothing yet, but 
He's already up to a 78 overall, not including morale. That's like one of the best draft picks we've ever had, probably. So I'm happy about that. Okay, divisional round of the playoffs. We got the 11 and 5 Bears with that rookie quarterback who won rookie of the year. And the Bears offense is always really, really good. But we beat them 21-17. It's funny how it's so good in the game, but it's terrible in real life. And now we have the Packers in the conference championship. Where have we seen this before? Come on. Super Bowl bound. Let's go, Giants. Please. We lost. Our Packers had to get one over on us, finally. Now, they won in the divisional in 2016. That that Giants team was awful. Uh, I don't know how they won 11 games a year. They really were bad. Super overrated. Point differential was not even good at all. Should we bring back anybody in here? If BJ Hill's less than 3 mil, maybe. Oh, he's cheap. He is cheap. If BJ Hill accepts, he can easily come back. All right, BJ Hill's back. If Lorenzo Carter's like same deal, nah, he's expensive. Um, so we're out on that. But we still have a lot of money. We have uh, some holes on the offensive line that need fixing. Center. Other, I mean, that's kind of it because Barbieri's pretty good, and he could even slide in. Wide receiver's a big need. Golden Tate retired. And then defensively, we're just looking for a really impactful edge rusher. And I, I think that's kind of it. <laughs> Leighton Van Der Esch is here. Mitchell Schwartz. Michael Gallup would be an interesting sign. Um, Uchenna Nwosu is probably our best bet if I wanted an edge rusher. But I almost rather would draft one. Is there a good interior offensive lineman I can sign who's not super old? Um, I mean, if any, it'd be, it'd be like Connor Williams. So, might look to do that. He's a dude. They're just expensive. I don't want to pay five and a half for him, really. Okay, so we got Connor Williams. Interesting. Now, he played tackle at Texas, and he's certainly not a center. Kevin Zeitler is an 89 overall center, which means Kevin Zeitler is going to move to center and um, be an 89 overall. So, I'm in, I'm in on that. Connor Williams can play right guard. Or we could move Will Hernandez over, I guess. But Connor Williams is going to play right guard. And now the offensive line has been completely rebuilt. Okay, we pick at number 19 overall. Still wouldn't be opposed to moving up. I know I trade down a lot, and you don't like that. But uh, sometimes you got to. Ooh, Frederick Dawson out of Georgia. He looks like he could be a beast. 4-4-9 speed at 6-3 with good route running in general. That's not too bad. I didn't even notice Clinton Fryer out of Texas. 6-3, 4-4-7 speed unbelievable top skills that's the guy not frederick dawson dumbass <laughs> no no but out of texas hook him horns i'm in okay um i didn't expect that to go through but it, we're trading number 30 overall in a first next year which for some reason is projected number four overall and they just straight up accepted that really really quickly which makes me think i probably could have gotten more for it but i did not want to risk this receiver going off the board the other one just went I didn't want to risk it. There's no reason to. We're going to take him now. Clinton Fryer out of Texas. Deep threat. 6'3". Unbelievable top skills. Good combine. Welcome to the team. 77 overall, number five in the class. We took him at number six. Star or better development. He's going to come in and be our number one right away. 90 medium route running. Good speed. Good spectacular catch. Good everything. 85 catching. What a beast. 86 ball carry vision as well. Clinton Fryer. Maybe the son of Irving Fryer. Great receiver of the past. That could be that fun storyline. What a monster. Okay, trading number 19, a 4, and a 2 next year for number 15. I'm moving up for a player that I want. I really wish there was a great edge rusher available, but there isn't one in this class that I can see. So um, I want this cornerback. Joshua Humphrey at a USC appears to be very, very good. Jerome Mumphrey, um, also a talent, but it's between Humphrey and Mumphrey. I'm going Humphrey. Um Looks pretty good, both from California. Both names start with J's. I mean, is he even better? He's just faster. He's more of an athlete. 4-3-6 or 4-4-8, but he's more of a strong type of guy. They're both zone style. Was this a mistake to move up? It's just like B press versus B plus press. He has better ability. He's faster. I'm going to go with the speed. Humphrey is a 78 overall, number three in the class, star or better development, 95 speed, 79 zone coverage. If anything, he looks like a free safety. Huh. Maybe we play him at free safety and play a uh, 
play the free safety or the corner we drafted, move to free safety, make him go back to corner. That wouldn't be bad at all. Also, I'm excited to see what that cornerback is overall wise in the draft recap. I think he's going to be pretty good. We'll go cornerback here, backup QB, Landon Hanks. He is a 76 overall, number 10 in the class, star or better development. 96 throw power. Oh my goodness. And he's wearing number eight, too. Yikes, Daniel Jones. <laughs> Quarterback controversy here. Oh, man. First of all, amazing draft for us. A 77, a 78, and a 76. And then the CPU took over because I simulated. But I'd like to see what that cornerback was. Uh, I assume he's going to be one of the better players in the class. He is a 77, so I guess we made the right move. But what's his development? If he has Superstar X-Factor and mine doesn't, I'm going to be disappointed. He only has star. All right, I am totally comfortable with my decision. Now, who else is in here? Because this, this looks like it's a really, really good draft class. 378s. Floyd Crompton was quite good, who um, is a run stopper type, so not really what we needed. Good free safety. Um, bunch of 77s. I mean, this was a really, really strong class. Wish we could see more of those. So this will be the team for this next season. I mean, it probably is going to be the last season, but I'm having a lot of fun now. I really should start this quarterback, obviously. I really should. Like, he's got the size. He's got the development. He's got the ability. But also, realistic rebuild, Danny Dimes. <sighs> Kill me. I don't know, man. Um, uh, you're going to be mad. I don't care. I'm going to start Hanks. I'm going to start Tom Hanks. Um, Castaway. Other movies. Defensively, this is what we're looking at. Humphrey's going to start at free safety. Move hold back to corner. He's an 81 overall. Um, all we're missing really is a dominant edge rusher and a kicker and a punter. And they're people too. So we probably should sign some of them. So we have somebody to do those jobs. And um, I will see you guys at the midseason mark. I anticipate big things. Let's get Nolan Weston. Midseason mark. We are... Five and three, okay. Kind of about the range where I expected us to be. Pretty successful record, but not amazing. Um, we'll upgrade the team and renegotiate some contracts. Dexter Lawrence being the top one, apparently, which is totally fine. He's only 81 overall. And Daniel Jones has an expiring contract. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Um, I'm pretty sure I have your replacement, so I don't think... I'm re-enlisting re I, I drafted somebody better. I like sorry. I'm running the team, okay? Cry about it. Dexter Lawrence is gonna return. We'll worry about like Darius Slayton and probably and Julian Love later. Darius Slayton is a little bit too rich for my blood, and then Julian Love is a very cheap contract. We'll extend him to a five year deal. He's so cheap for his ability. And DeAndre Baker, we don't really need at all. He's not expensive though. I mean, he'd be a good fourth corner to have, so, you know, we will extend him. Five years, whatever. He's cheap, and he's good enough. And then Daniel Jones, I don't know. O'Shane Zimenez is probably going to be like four plus. Five and a half. There's just no way I can afford to do that based on his ability. I'd rather just sign a sick free agent. All right, Clinton Fryer has Superstar Dev Plus, which is incredible. Hopefully it's Superstar X Factor. It is only Superstar, but still, I mean, that's not bad. It is not bad. Rookie receiver, 81 overall, superstar development. Do not mind that at all. That is clearly very good. Now, Hanks only has star development, but he's already up to an 81 overall. It was clearly the right move to start him. And then defensively, um, Humphrey only has star. That's a little bit disappointing. It always is. It always is. But, uh, I mean, this is a good defense. We're just missing that great edge rusher next to Chase Young, or on the other side, I should say. But uh, this team definitely really, really set up to win. We made the playoffs at 10 and 6. Cowboys won in the division, unfortunately. But we did what we could. And oh my goodness, first offense in the league. And Landon Hanks threw for 38 touchdowns. Now, the biggest disappointment of this team appears to be the defense. Because our offense was number one in yards and third in points scored. Defense was just a little bit lackluster compared to where expectations were. But what a rookie year from Landon Hanks. Daniel Jones, not too shabby either with the passing touchdown for 25 yards, uh, three completions. Rushing, Saquon Barkley, 
great year 1700 yards averaging over six per carry 12 tds receiving clinton fryer as a rookie 84 catches for almost 1200 yards and 12 tds eight touchdowns for justin jefferson four for sterling Shepard, nine for evan ingram saquon even had six of his own defensively zach cunningham with maybe a defensive player of the year campaign dexter lawrence with a great year our entire like linebackers you're getting after two 11 and a half sacks for chase young is great seven and a half for Zimenez, six and a half for leonard williams interceptions uh, not a whole ton unfortunately but um the defense didn't play up to the level i wanted them to we had at least one defensive touchdown terrell hull who it was at free safety or corner turn free safety turn corner again lamar jackson wins mvp of the six and ten ravens landon hanks is a rookie at seven that's also definitely offensive rookie of the year um nfc offensive player of the year is aaron Rodgers. saquon at two over landon hanks really he finished at number five defense player of the year jedevy on Clowney. chase young at nine offensive rookie of the year had to be landon hanks clinton fryer at number two um joey sauter at number six and the defensive rookie of the year forrest scarborough joshua humphrey the free safety at three i'm gonna do another season after this just because i'm enjoying myself so much this is like a whole 180 from the jets rebuild if you watch that on the channel the recent one so we're not going to hop in just yet but we will upgrade the team and then um simulate see if we can beat our division rival in the wild card to advance to the divisional and the moment of truth we cannot losing by three points absolutely brutal way to end this season but i'm i'm excited to do another off season and then hopefully win the super bowl as uh, colts and packers went at it do we bring back O'Shane Zimenez or Darius Slayton? I mean, O'Shane Zimenez has star development now. Daniel Jones has got to go. You got to know that, right? 77 overall. We're not going to give him 20 million, obviously. Zimenez is a... Uh, he's a little expensive. But you know what? We're, we're going to bring him back with star development if he wants to accept this contract. And we'll still look to upgrade the position. Darius Slayton... We'll give him a contract extension as well. This isn't really too bad for a 79 overall again but we have enough money to be aggressive and that's exactly what i anticipate doing if there's a great edge rusher available even if it's somebody old we're in a win now situation so if von miller or jj watt or khalil mack is available we have 36 mil i'm gonna get one and there's not we have david DeCastro, deforest buckner who's a great player but i mean that'd be an i mean i don't know we might as well just because he's so good He's going to be quite expensive, but he's a really good player, and he's definitely an upgrade at the position. So if we can sign him, I guess we will, but it's not like Rashawn Gary is all that big of an upgrade over O'Shane Zimenez, so I probably won't do that. Debo Samuel in here. Fryer got up to Superstar X Factor. That's sick. DeForest Buckner rejects. Can you not? I was just looking for another stud piece to add to our team. Landon Hanks is up to Superstar Development. I mean, this, it was clearly the right move to start him in retrospect. His ability is lofting Deadeye and long-range Deadeye. But Clinton Fryer, what a pick he's turned out to be. Getting Superstar X-Factor. He has Moss, too, which is awesome. Post-Flag Elite. I mean, I don't plan on revisiting this one because it's a realistic style, but I sure would like to. As there are so many studs on this team. What a team. And I mean, like, obviously, it's the Giants. I'm a Giants fan. Like, I'm putting my heart and soul into it. <laughs> no, I'm not, but like, I mean, this is a really fun one. We just have, we've had great picks, and it, it makes it a lot of fun to see these guys develop. But the, the uh, free Asian class is pretty weak. So we're going to go to the draft. I don't have a pick this year in the first round. I'll probably trade up um, if there's a great edge rusher available, even to number one if I can. So. We're going for it all here. I accidentally simulated my pick instead of the next pick. Um, so, so much for the idea of trading up. But that's okay. We're not going to freak out. <laughs> not like I did in the Jets rebuild that scared the, the kids and the family. That's all right. All right, there's one guy on my draft board here. It's a safety. Here he is. He's a 69 overall. Nice. Number 29 in the class. A uh, good depth player, I suppose. But that's going to take us to the end of this thing here. And uh, we'll try to win a Super Bowl here in the final season. Okay, so this is the team for the final year. The receivers never really got all that good, but, I mean, we're, we're trending in that direction at least. And then defensively, we got a great defense. Just O'Shane Dominguez isn't a stud. And 
our D line never progressed, which was strange, like at all. Leonard Williams went up two. Dalvin Tomlinson one. Dexter Lawrence up one, maybe. I don't know why they progress so slowly. It's like they're not moving at all. All right, so this is the team for, for the final season. Um, the weakest point is the offensive line and fullback, which doesn't matter. And then defensively, we got just studs all over the place, pretty much. I thought, did I just, did I already do that? I may have. All right, well, you got it again. This is a quick version. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark, upgrade the team, and then see you guys for the playoffs. High hopes. Midseason mark, we are only four and three. A little bit disappointing there for sure. And then Friar's complaining that he's not touching the ball enough, which we definitely don't want that. Is he in the slot? Is Sterling Shepard in the slot? Get him out of there. We're gonna put we're gonna put Fryer at number two for sure there. Or number one even. I don't know. Alright, playoff time. We are hopefully gonna make it. Oh, first round bye, even after a loss. Ten and six with a first round bye. Um strange, but I'll take it. Offense was pretty good in general. Let's just take a look at the stats. See how uh see how we did. Lennon Hanks, good year. Saquon, really good year. Receiving, Clinton Fryer figured it out a bit, but not a whole lot of touchdowns for anybody. Saquon Barkley had the most receiving touchdowns, and then Evan Ingram, uh, the receivers weren't even there. Like Sterling Shepard and Justin Jefferson combined for the amount of TDs that Saquon had by himself receiving. So strange. Great year for Curtis Dodge, who had five and a half sacks, 13 and a half for Chase Young. Interceptions, um, you know, a few for the team. I'll take that. Not too bad there. And then no defensive touchdowns, but we will check out awards. Do I think we won anything? Not really. Might have some guys in the conversation like Saquon 8 for MVP, NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Saquon wins it. I think that's well well deserved. He had a great year. Defense Player of the Year goes to Chase Young. That's surprising, but I'll take it. Curtis Dodge at 6. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Darren Lyons, or Duran. Defensive Rookie of the Year is uh, Felix Beecham. Uh, maybe next time I say Defensive Rookie of the Year, I'll actually open my mouth. It's a defensive yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, first round bye. So we will face somebody in the divisional here, and it's the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to jump into Super Sim for sure. We're up to a 90 overall, and then Sterling Shepard goes up even one more. Let's get it, man. This is this is what we play for. Come on now. Come on. Um, yeah, I mean, like this is this is a hell of a team. Dodge is up to a 90. Let's go ahead and uh, let's destroy the Cowboys. Cowboys can't win in the playoffs anyway, right? We're an 86 overall. That is not too bad. So close game so far. We were down by, I think, like 14 nothing, but we came back. And this is a really close game in the snow, no less. 24-24 as the Cowboys take a touchdown lead with less than two minutes to go. We're going to go ahead and jump in. And it's 4th and 14 is when we're jumping in? Oh, my goodness. Like, Fryer has Moss, but I'm, I'm worried it's too little too late at this point. And, and the clock's ticking as well. Oh, and we got... Pressure in there real early. Fryer can't go up and make the catch. What the hell is it? We jumped in at the worst possible time. Fourth down. I have one play. The clock's ticking. Now I need a turnover. When they're going to be trying their very hardest not to turn over the football. And I left that open. I got to strip it or something. Maybe that was best case scenario. Quick touchdown. We get the ball back. We need an onside now. LaVisca Chenault. This game's over. All right, so I seriously doubt my ability to score two touchdowns in a minute and 17 seconds. But I suppose it is possible. I just can't use any of my timeouts. And we just got to get out of bounds and stuff. But Saquon's really good. So as long as we can find him in space, I guess it's possible. But this is like a, a pretty, pretty tough situation. We kind of just need a streak touchdown like right now. Do we have it? I don't know. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Fryer, go up and get it. It's a great play by the DB, Byron Jones. Byron Jones in the zone. I'm going to need Fryer to get open on this really badly. Evan Ingram's going to need to block, and we just got to we just gotta look for Fryer. He's got that ability, and it's an overthrow to end the game. <laughs> oh, man, what a way to end the video. That's, uh, that's so sucky, dude. Seems like it's always something. That's why All Madden's so dumb, man. Just let me play the game. I, I mean, I got to hop in, and I, I have an open receiver in that situation, and he just throws it out of bounds. <sighs> all right. <laughs> they all end the same. Just like life, pain and suffering and misery. 
So this is the final team. Um, they just couldn't do it in the end. They couldn't do it, but it was a really fun rebuild to do. We got a lot of really good players. Dodge got up to Superstar X Factor in Super Bowl week, which is always awesome to see. And he got Selfless too, which is a sick one. Um, but Chase Young's up to a 98 now um, with morale. Well, 97, I guess. I guess the upgrade point didn't change because I went into Power Rusher. But um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's an absolute monster. Christian Fulton's good. Kendall Fuller. Just a bunch of beasts. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Yeah.